Welcome. So today I want to talk about Nokrop Prize um, Monomyth, which refers to us the overarching human story that can be used to uh, infer the characteristics of the four seasons of the year. So Monomyth is a, a kind of story that can um, work with people across cultures and across time. People across cultures and time could identify with monomyth because it is a, the story of humanity. Now, as far as prize is concerned, the four seasons of the year could be used to represent this story, such as that we have here in this diagram. Now, I made this diagram based on how um, Bressler 1994 has described the monomyth by Price. So, at the top of the human story, you have romance, which is represented by the season summer. And now, this page of the human story is full of happiness and fulfillment. And at the bottom of the diagram, you have anti-romance, which is represented by the season winter. And this story is the opposite of romance uh, because it is a story, it's a winter story. It's a story of bondage, a story of fear, frustration, imprisonment, and so on and so forth. And in the middle, to the right, you have comedy, which is represented by the season spring. And it means rise from anti-romance to freedom and happiness. The story where an individual or a people um, rises from um, bandage to happiness and freedom. Now, to the left of the middle, you have the, uh, the tragedy, a tragedy represented by the season four, and this story um, represents a story of disaster, fall from romance to disaster. And I appreciate Friday's story because most um, stories could be interpreted from this perspective. For instance, if we take Things Fall Apart um, by Chino Achebe, a uh, Kongwa story could be told based on this uh, monomyth by Friday. I think that a Kongwa story begins from um, comedy or spring, is rise from anti romance, is attempt to be a man of his of his own in the world. Um, when he when he starts to farm, to work hard so as not to be like his father. And then the story goes on to summer. The summer of the story, Congo story, could be seen when he has become successful in life with great wrestler. He has married um, wives and has had children. He has built his own house. And he's a great warrior, well respected in the clan. He has um, he has titles, that's the Kung Fu Summer story, and of course, the Kung Fu anti-romance could be seen um, right from the time when he killed Kemafuna, that's where his anti-romance begins. Um, this is my interpretation, you could have yours, and um, from there to when he kills um, a boy during a funeral, 
the pair of the oldest man, the mafia, and he has to be banished. And that is his winter story. To his tragedy and fall when he returns to mafia and the white man has already come and he cannot manage the changes very well and commits suicide after killing the messenger. So what I have done is that I have remodeled this um, monomyth by prior to um, talk about the African story. So I have mapped the African story um, on this, uh, based on this um, prior uh, monomyth. And I am using the African season, using the African season. Uh, for instance, for African story, we have the benign dry season at the top as a romance. And this captures our pre-colonial African stories. Our pre-colonial African stories. Um, they are full of happiness and fulfillment, joy, because we, we lived uninterrupted, un, um, without any foreign interferences, and we um, enjoyed our communality. And so this is really a, a happy phase in the African story. And then we have malignant dry season. This is our anti-romance and it's used to capture the colonial encounter. Used to capture the colonial encounter. This story of our anti-romance is full of slavery, bondage, colonialism, um, and all sorts of sadness. And after that, we move on to our benign wet season. Benign wet season. Um, you know that the reason I'm, I use benign and malignant is that there's, there are times during the dry season that you actually enjoy the season because even though the sun is um, shining high in the sky, you you are still happy because when you go out, you have breeze blowing. Uh, but there's also the harsh part of the dry season. That's why I call that one malignant. <clears throat> so even when you, in, in wet season, when you have rain, the rain could be benign because it could help you have water, um, help um, the plants to grow. But there's also malignant one that could actually um, destroy things, the storms and the hurricanes and everything. So I hope you take note of that. So we move on to the benign wet season, our comedy. This is the, uh, the phase of nationalism in Africa, the nationalist struggle for independence, um, the gaining of independence and the optimism that when we had independence, all will be well. So that story is represented there. And to the, in the middle to the left, you now have a malignant wet season. This is a tragedy. I think that this is where we are in our uh, story as a people in Africa. And um, it, this story talks about our post-colonial disillusionment, neo-colonialism, disappointment, pessimism, um, which all which um, characterize uh, milieu at the moment. So this is um, my own remodeling and reinterpretation of um, Prior's um, uh, monomyth within the context of the African story. And I hope to um, represent it in a fully fledged paper as soon. So that's where we um, end our class for today. I'll see you next time. Bye.